Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be carrying on from our last videos we broke down the brief and the mock-ups for our take-home test. Now we're ready to actually start setting up our Xcode project. So for this section we're mainly only going to need the mock-ups since we're going to be setting up the assets and colours that will be used from our mock-ups due in the designs and also any icons. Now there's two things here that I there's two things here. I designed this so I actually know the colors that we'll use and they're all system colors that come with iOS just to make this easier and the same with the icons they're actually all SF symbols as well because they're all system icons just to help us make this course go a bit um, smoother rather than you having to export icons from different websites so first of all let's actually create a new Xcode project so I'm just going to make sure that it's an iOS app and then what we're going to do here is just call it what you want to call it. I'm just going to call mine take home project. And then make sure that the interface is Swift UI and language is Swift. I hit next. And then I'm just going to save this into my documents. Okay, cool. So now we have our Swift UI project set up. So first of all, let's actually create a new file that we'll use to help us hold all of our icons. We'll call this file symbols and we'll place it in a folder called resources. So what we want to do now is actually look at our mockup and see all of the possible symbols that we reference in the designs. So let's create this new folder first. I'm just going to call it resources. Cool. And then now let's go into our mock-up design and we just want to pick out any icons that we can see. So I can see this icon here, which is a plus. I can also see this one here and this gear one here as well. And there's also a link icon as well. So I can actually only see one, two, three, four icons. Now what I would do is actually check this against the SF symbols app to try to find these icons. Now I already know what these icons are. But what I'm actually going to do is use a tool called SF menu bar, which allows me to directly look at SF symbols using my menu bar within, you know, whilst I'm using Xcode as well. And if you want to learn more about this tool and many more, then check out my video, top five iOS development tools in the Swift UI sessions beginners playlist. So let's go back into our project here. And what we want to do is if we just go and just open up SF menu bar here, I know that the first one is called plus. So if we just scroll down, we can see our plus SF symbol here, like so. So let's create a new file. And we're just going to call this symbols. Cool. Now I'm going to actually type out the SF symbols that we're going to use within this project. And I'm going to break down the reason why we've done it like so. So let's just add this in. So we've now got our enum in place and we've got symbols for each one of the, you know, icons that we have within our mockups. Now it's worth knowing here that I've used an enum as opposed to a struct. And the reason why I've used an enum is because you can't actually accidentally initialize an enum when you use this technique. So what this is going to do is actually give us almost like a namespace. So a type safe way to actually access the SF symbols that we want to use within our application. So we can't possibly misspell the person SF symbol when we want to access it like so. So if I want to use this SF symbol, all I need to do is just say symbols dot person like so so I can't possibly mess it up and also as well like I said before we can't create an instance of symbols because it's an enum with static properties okay cool so now that we have our enum set up and we have our icons you know in a nice type safe way where we can easily access them the next thing that we want to do is actually access and create a similar type of you know structure for the colors that we're going to use within our take home project. So let's go back to our mockups. And you'll notice that we actually, the first thing you'll notice is that we actually have this blue. Now it's worth noting that this blue is actually not a color that I've added in. This is actually just the default system tint. So we don't need to actually worry about this color because we'll get it for free. It's also worth noting as well that the colors that we do need to worry about is this background color. You can see it's got almost like this gray color here and as well as this color here, 
this light purple and we've got a white and we're going to need to actually set some color for our text because you can see that the color for the text changes depending on whether it's light or dark mode and we've also got this purple as well so let's actually look at added in these colors within our Xcode project now one thing to note is that a lot of these colors that we're going to be working with are actually system colors so they're not actually colors where you need to get a hex code you can actually just choose it from a drop down so if we just go into our Xcode project, what we want to do first of all is we want to actually add these colors to our assets folder. So let's go into our assets folder. And then now we're actually going to start to add each one of the colors. So I'm just going to create a placeholder for each color within here. So let's just create a new color set. And the first one we're going to do is we're going to create a color for background. And then we're going to create a color for detail background now you may be wondering what is the detail background in this context well the detail background the way i'm approaching it is that that's just this background color here that's used for this box and this box as well. So I'm calling that detail background because it gives you some detail. Now we're also going to use a color for text. And we're also going to need a color for our pill as well. So this purple pill here. Cool. So now let's actually start to fill out these colors. So as you can see, because we're actually working with light and dark mode in our mockups, we actually do want to provide a light and dark alternative for our users application. Let's first of all start off with our background. So I know that the background color for any appearance, I want it to be the secondary system background color. So let's open up our panel and then we're going to choose this from the drop down here. So we just scroll down you should see the secondary system background color. And for dark mode, we actually want the color to be the system background color, which is basically black in dark mode. So we're going to choose that also from the drop down, like so. So we're going to choose system background color. Okay, cool. So now we have that set up. So for our detail background, if we just go into our designs, you'll notice that on any appearance it's white, but on the dark mode, it's actually not just black. It's actually got like a lighter, you know, black here. So we're going to use the secondary system um, background color for dark mode. So for any appearance, we're going to leave this as white. So that's fine. But what we're going to do on the dark here is for our drop down, we're going to actually change this to be secondary system background color like so. And then for our pill, you'll notice that it's actually a purple. So it's like a purple color. So we're going to change this to be the system purple. But it's the same on both. It's the same on both light and dark mode. So we actually don't need to tweak this color on depending on the appearance. So we're just going to change this to none. So we just get one single color. And in this drop down, we're just going to choose the system purple color. So now this will be used on either light or dark mode. We don't need to specify it specifically for the appearance. And the final one we need to worry about is text. So for our text, we're now going to specify that we want it to be on any appearance, the label color, which is black and on dark mode, we want it also to be the label color, which will be white. So let's choose this now, label color. And then for dark mode, we'll also want this to be the label color as well. Cool. So now we have all of our colors set up within our application. The next thing we need to do is actually add in the color similar to the way that we added in our symbols. So let's create a new file within resources called theme. Now within theme, we're just going to use the exact same concepts. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. Okay, cool. So now we have our theme set up similar to the same way that we have our symbol set up. So we now have a type safe way to easily access our colors within our SwiftUI app and also as well our SF symbols.
So in our next video, what we're going to do is actually break down the purpose of this and they also discuss our project structure as well when tackling a SwiftUI project. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below as well as if you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you in a bit. Deuces.